dream that I simply killed him in a rage. But when he actually began dying, I tried to make him well again by kisses. It was no use. I suffered such anxiety that I felt on the point of death myself, so that I awoke. So that is the way you think of him, I said to myself that night. You must forgive him everything. And you know, I have forgiven him everything. Everything. Then I fell asleep again. I went on dreaming that he actually did die. Once more I was seized by anxiety. It was certain as life, or something of that sort, that as soon as he died, I would die with him. Rachel speaks directly to an image of Menachem, which she projects over the heads of the audience. So this is your and my end. This is the way we are dying. This is our death. <laughs> so I have killed you after all, for I am dying with you. The musical introduction to the song Day and Night begins softly in the background as Rachel continues speaking calmly again to the audience. But it was just a dream after all, and this dream belongs to the day, not to the night. What the day ultimately preserved of this dream was not a consequence or an insight, but only the tormenting question, why did I not actually kill him? I do not know what in actual life keeps me from acting that way, or rather, I know precisely, though I do not know how to name it. What's the use of day's constant gratitude for life's being understandable if the night provides an endless panorama of images, a vast web of incomprehensibility. The story of the heart of the world and the spring. There is a mountain, and on that mountain there stands a rock. The spring gushes forth from that rock. Now everything has a heart, and the world as a whole has a heart. The heart of the world is a complete form with face, hands, and feet. But even the toenail of that heart is more heart-like than any other heart. The mountain and the spring stand at one end of the world, and the heart is at the other. The heart stands facing the spring, yearning to draw near to it. It is filled with wild yearning and constantly cries out in its longing to approach the spring. The spring too longs for the heart. Now, if the heart is filled with so great a desire to draw near the spring, why does it not simply do so? But as soon as it begins to move towards the mountain, the mountain top, where the spring emerges, disappears from view, and the life of the heart flows from that spring. So if it were to allow the spring to vanish from its sight, it would die. If the heart were to die, God forbid, the entire world would be destroyed. For the heart of the world is the life of all things. How could the world exist without a heart? For this reason the heart can never approach the spring, but stands opposite, looks at it, and longs. What use is it to be brave and taciturn to deny the ultimate burden and profoundest unhappiness? Too proud to let even oneself share the secret. If the night reveals all, If the night refuses to keep silent, refuses to fulfill its function, and provide a dark and lulling background for the weary soul, if it deceptively trans.
into life's ground and native soil. Rachel once again speaks directly to the audience. I dreamed that everyone had found the ideal. Then I recognized that this ideal was a living person who could not restrain his laughter. In my dream, I announced to this person, My dear sir, it is absolutely outrageous that you are so joyous today. Will you ever stop laughing? Whereupon he put his arms around me and invited me to dance. Everyone else stepped back, but that did not bother us in the least. We just danced and danced and danced.